Hello guys, in today's artist review I'm going to talk about one of the most influential photographers for me who actually made me go into photography and his name is Anton Corbijn. He is a Dutch photographer born in Holland in 1955 and in 1979 he moved to London and he spent many many years of his career living in the UK. Um, so I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of his work. You might have not known it was him, but his work is really, really recognizable. And to this day, he still inspires me as a person and as a photographer, film director, film video maker. And so he does a lot of amazing things. So uh, let's have a look. So uh, the first picture that I chose, I'm sure you've seen it is of Miles Davis, the musician. He photographed mainly musicians and maybe some other celebrities like actors throughout his career, but primarily he's known as a music photographer. So his style is um, very recognizable because it's always film, film look. Um, it's always very contrasty. It's always sort of grainy and gritty images and it's very bold. Another of his iconic images is a hand of John Lee Hooker and to me it really represents who he is as a photographer, as a visual artist, you know, that very graphic, very contrasty, very ball style with exaggerated textures and wrinkles and it's it's a lot about shape and contrast so this this hand is just such a representative image of uh, who Anton Corbijn is and um, it's so visually striking that you know once you see it you will never forget this image so like I said, he photographed a lot of musicians. He started working in, in the 70s, but his you know, most iconic work was produced in the 80s and especially the 90s, and then all the way through through 2000s and to this day, of course. Um, um, and so he photographed Depeche Mode, uh, and he also did a lot of uh, Depeche Mode's music videos, and he sort of established their whole visual style as a band. So he's definitely much more than a photographer. He's like a creative director and art director and all of those things. And you can see uh, his also photographic approach in cinematography as well. And I love watching those music videos. They're incredibly inspiring. And what I find especially interesting in his is his ability to uh, to build the composition through the foreground versus middle ground versus, versus background subject relationships. And I think this particular picture really shows that. So there's two people sort of moving across the frame. One is in the foreground, the other one is a step away from him, like towards the middle ground. And then there are two people in the back and how they are arranged in the frame and in the space is really, really extraordinary. I think he's a master of that sort of composition with regards to the depth of the fray, of the space. So another, another example of that is this triangular composition here when you have a lead singer, the Pesh mode staying, you know, being in the middle and the foreground and then the two other guys in the back and having the contrast of them wearing black and him wearing white or something very light. And again, very dynamic. He likes using wide-angle lens. Here's another example. So when the foreground subject is much bigger than the ones standing behind him. And I, as a photographer, I don't really use compositions like that when your subjects are overlapping. I mean, I use it sometimes, but not as much. And, I think he's just the master of that because to me it's really hard to arrange something like this when you have overlapping figures and yet give everyone 
every subject an important role and significance in the shot and you know let them play that role and still be still be essential to the composition and to the story of course another example um and a lot of his images are known for that you know sort of blurry at the same time grainy and very moody look and what is really great that he was able to establish that aesthetic so early on and in his interviews he says you know when he started just in the 70s he, there was maybe like one picture in the year that he really uh, liked and felt that, that it was him in the 80s the number of pictures that he could qualify as himself as as me uh grew significantly and then you know finally he refined his style so perfectly that any shoot that he would go and do everyone would recognize that it was his work and this is really really amazing because he works more as an artist like, like any kind of you know painter or director or anyone rather than a documentary photographer or portrait photographer so to him is self-expression as well uh, this is uh I actually don't know, but I think it's a still from one of his videos for Depeche Mode. And it's so contrasty and so grainy and so just uh, graphic and artistic that I just love this shot. And a lot of time he actually uses more sort of a flat light, but he adds contrast with just, you know, the fact that he uses film and the way he develops and prints it. Uh, but in some of his work, you can see also very contrasty lighting and a brighter background and a darker subject against a brighter background. So this is just an example of that. And then I wanted to show you some uh, portraits that are more environmental portraits, maybe more traditional in a way that they weren't set up and, you know, he just was with the subject on location somewhere and just snap that moment and um uh, you know it's really interesting to see how he's still able to bring out his own style and his own character even though you know nothing is set up nothing is prepared for him here he was just um with johnny rotten from sex pistols here maybe in his house or somebody else's house and he just took the shot and it still looks like anton corbin and it's really amazing. And the same, I can say the same about this picture of the same subject on a different location, but with the, with the same photographer. And it still looks like him, you know, it's still it's his style and his grain and his contrast and this expression of, you know, it's always a really bold expression of a very, uh, it can be an intimate moment, it can be a very special moment but it's still going to be uh, a very outstanding emotion and expression that he's somehow able to get out of his subjects. He also worked a lot with Tom Waits, who is, you know, a very, uh, uh, you know, very uh, outstanding, very artistic person. He's uh, by himself already he's a very interesting subject to photograph like any photographer any portrait photographer would probably dream to photograph tom waits because of like how bold he is how interesting he is and so um you know this collaboration of these two unique people um really proved to be extremely fruitful and i just love the shots that they created together and you can you can see that it's a collaboration of two creatives it's not just the photographer directing the subject is um, Anton being able to see the frame and Tom being able to perform in the frame and you know add his his personality and his body language and all these things and this is shot this shot is just amazing love it so much and then another one you know him being maybe silly playful sitting in the tree and then Anton being able to compose that and you know consider all the other graphic elements in the shot, maybe suggest to hang the hat on one of the branches. Amazing. Another shot, um, 
you know, sort of looking down at the subject and turning him into this graphic element, very dynamic, very flat, actually looking, you can't really identify the details inside this shape, but it's a very dynamic shape. There's lots of character in this whole, in the whole, in the whole story here, and this, the black hat being so much away from Tom Waits and the, all the other elements adding to this dynamics of the composition. I think it's also very, very great and very masterfully done. Um, and then he photographs, of course, David Bowie and other musicians of, you know, the, you know all the great musicians, actually, I was going to say the 90s rock bands, but not only that. Um, also being able to capture them in that special moment. You know, you can see that they're very, very honest and very themselves. And even this picture of Mick Jagger, in you, we know that it's Mick Jagger, but if we didn't know, we would totally believe it's just a, just a lady uh, being all dressed up, getting ready for, I don't know, a concert or going somewhere, going out. Um, just because he's so organic and so believable and he that he is trusting the photographer so much. And when I read uh, interviews with Anton Corbine and he described his approach to his subject, he says that he never um, shows up with a big team on set. It's just him or just him and his assistant. So he's able to, uh, you know, make this atmosphere very trustworthy and the subjects are comfortable with being playful and silly and dress up in front of the camera. They don't feel the pressure so much because it's sort of very friendly and he becomes very you know, friendly with them and creates that atmosphere that they trust him. And so just wanted to show you a few more shots of uh, female musicians. This is Johnny Mitchell and this is PJ Harvey. Also really beautiful shots and so emotional and so honest. And, you know, again, in his style, although, you know, every person is so quite different in front of the camera, but you can also see the photographer. And so I wanted to end with his quote, which I find really, really important for any photographer, any artist working these days. I have always felt uh, that if you take a picture of a person, the picture not only has to say something about the, that particular person, but also say something about the photographer. Why else would you have one photographer take this picture and not the other? So the challenging part is taking a photograph that stands out, also producing an end result that doesn't resemble anything you've seen before. I think that says it all. Just think about it when you take your next project, when you photograph your next project and work on it, that it has to say something, not about just the subject, but about you as a person. And why would someone hire you and not another photographer and how to make it stand out. And it's, it's really, really important. And, uh, it's something on the psychological level, you know, who you are as a person and how you project yourself onto your subjects. I hope this was interesting and maybe gave you some food for thought. If you'd like to see more of my reviews, please like and subscribe and see all the links in the descriptions of this video. Thank you so much.